After, I talk about how Palantir plans to differentiate themselves from other competitors in the market, and how their quarter one earnings result, in my opinion, will act as a positive catalyst for their share price, we're going to move on to our next article. And in the next article, we're going to talk about how a Palantir insider is selling shares right now. But I'm going to tell you not to worry about this, and when we go over this article, I'll tell you why. Then the last article we're going to be talking about are some other companies which also have rapidly approaching earnings results this week, because Palantir is not the only company that are releasing earnings. So for more videos just like this one, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Palantir Technologies, if you didn't know, is a big data and analytics company which also specializes in artificial intelligence. This company has two main business segments, which would be their government segment as well as their commercial segment. Currently, the company is trading at around $23.33 per share under the ticker symbol named PLTR. And as I'm sure you're aware, they are about to release their quarter one results and this will be my last video on Palantir before that particular earnings result. But once those earnings results do come out, we will analyze that earnings report and I'll tell you what happened and what this means for the future of this company. But in the meantime, let's get into analyzing Palantir Technologies. Right now, investors are being wishy-washy on Palantir because they are trading at a premium in regards to their accounting ratio known as their price to earnings ratio, which is currently around 68, which is rather high. Ideally, we would want this number below 50 at a minimum, and that would be a better buying opportunity from a value standpoint, according to investors. For starters, we need to remember that Palantir's valuation got to this point because of their artificial intelligence platform named AIP. AIP is Palantir's proprietary software, which will allow businesses to utilize this platform to make better data-driven business decisions to make their overall business more effective and efficient. And right now, AIP is the talk of the town, and they have been for quite a while, because this could allow Palantir Technologies to hyperscale their commercial business. This will also allow them to build out to their overall margins, and according to this author, it could cause their share price to 5 or 10x from the current level. However, the opposite would also be true, because if AIP does not live up to investors' expectations in regards to this upcoming earnings result, the stock will absolutely plummet in the respected share price. So let's talk about how likely it is for Palantir to use this upcoming earnings result as a positive catalyst for their share price. In my personal opinion, I believe Palantir Technologies will beat in at least their revenue or earnings in their upcoming earnings results on May 6th, which would be Monday. And one of the main reasons why I am really rooting for Palantir Technologies right now is because I like how they deliver customized data solutions for particular commercial enterprises. And here's what I mean by that. Palantir software essentially molds to the type of business that it is trying to make more effective and efficient. And according to the author of this article, he believes that this high product customization could act as a fundamental strength and weakness for Palantir Technologies. And and as we've covered before, certain enterprises are willing to pay top dollar for specific business needs to be met instead of buying software which is just generally applicable to what they need. However, the opposite is also true. The author goes on to say that this is a weakness because these custom-built solutions are also time-consuming which could limit their overall scalability and a business model. However, I personally disagree with him and here's why. Palantir's AIP platform is already moldable to the specific business which adopts it. This is why Palantir also issued out their AIP boot camps, which allows various businesses to test Palantir's artificial intelligence platform for their specific business. In a nutshell, Palantir will train this other business's engineers or faculty to use AIP properly for their specific business needs. And in my opinion, this ultimately solves this specificity problem in regards to customer customization. However, Palantir Technologies has more to offer than their artificial intelligence platform named AIP, because they also have other platforms platforms, mainly known as Foundry, Gotham, and Apollo. This company also has strong ties to the FBI as well as the CIA, and they are backed by a very prestigious investor named Peter Thiel, which was one of the co-founders of this company. On top of that, Palantir has a lot of contracts with various commercial enterprises and government agencies, which really does give Palantir a leg up in these respected spaces. Now, one of the problems here that people point out is that Palantir is more reliant on government contracts than their commercial business. However, I believe that their commercial business will super 
proceed their government business in a relatively short amount of time. Currently, Palantir Technologies does make the majority of their revenue from government contracts. However, eventually, their commercial revenues will outpace their government segment because there is more market opportunity here. And I think their AIP platform will prove this in their upcoming earnings results. You should also be aware that Palantir Technologies is a software as a service business. And so far, SaaS businesses have absolutely dominated the tech industry. If you didn't know, a SaaS business is a very highly scalable business which has lucrative margins, and that's why a lot of investors decide to invest into SaaS or software as a service businesses. Obviously, this type of business model has fueled Palantir's overall success. But like I mentioned, the real growth opportunity here lies in the United States commercial business and not necessarily their government business. To give you some hard data in regards to this fact, according to Palantir's quarter 4 2023 report, their US commercial revenues grew by 70% year over year, and their total contract value, also known as TCV, grew by 107% year over year. In essence, this means that Palantir has more than doubled the size of their US commercial business since their introduction of their artificial intelligence platform, just like we've predicted. But what does this have to do with their upcoming earnings results on May 6th? Well, I think their AIP platform will allow them to supersede analysts' estimates in regards to the revenue on this upcoming report. And once that happens, this will act as a positive catalyst for their share price, at least in the short term. The author of this article even agrees by saying that he believes right now Palantir is at an inflection point, and their quarter one results will show whether AIP's success has been continued or not. In my personal opinion, this quarter one result from Palantir Technologies will show what AIP is capable of, however their future earnings results will tell whether or not this artificial intelligence platform will be able to sustain its current growth rates in the commercial sector. You should also be aware that Palantir most likely won't start paying a dividend anytime soon, and stock buybacks are probably not even on the minds of their overall management. And this makes sense because Palantir mainly wants to reinvest their profits and money back into themselves so they can grow rapidly. Ideally, Palantir Technologies will demonstrate that their artificial intelligence platform is scalable in their quarter one earnings results and their revenue results. And if this ends up happening, then the company will begin to demonstrate their value as the next major software as a service business. However, there is two main problems that investors need to be aware of, and here's the first one. Palantir has historically issued a significant amount of new shares to reward its management. This has resulted in an increase in a share count and dilution for existing shareholders. However, I would like to point out that this stock dilution is coming in the form of stock-based compensation. Essentially, Palantir is paying some of their best engineers in stock, and this ultimately keeps these very brilliant engineers working at Palantir Technologies, and it also allows Palantir to steal talent from other companies because Palantir can pay these engineers more. Therefore, Palantir is using this stock-based compensation as an incentive for very intelligent engineers engineers to come over to Palantir, and this is also being used to help a Palantir keep their current engineers, which are brilliant. So ultimately, we can bite the bullet on this one, and ideally, Palantir could keep this up. However, hopefully they do this within reason. Another thing that I think investors should be aware of is that you should not overexpose yourself to any singular company. I see a lot of people and investors over allocating themselves unnecessarily to Palantir Technologies. Remember, we want to be wise investors, and that means we should not over allocate ourselves or overexpose ourselves to any one singular stock without taking into consideration proper risk management. This is why investors who are going quote unquote all in on Palantir Technologies are being very foolish and they are not really investing. Instead, they are gambling. This is why I always encourage you to do your own research and remember not to overexpose yourself to any one singular stock and that would include Palantir Technologies. With those warnings out of the way, the author does go on to say that quarter one will be crucial to see whether or not Palantir's artificial intelligence platform will continue to deliver on their top tier promises to investors. And of course, I personally think that it will, and that means that Palantir will end up scaling their business. But in the meantime, I'm actually waiting for Palantir to pull back before I personally buy more, because I am not willing to buy the premium in their respected share price right now. But with that being said, I will trade this company according to their upcoming results, because I believe the results will be positive, which will cause their share price to increase. And after it does increase, I'm going to sell, and then inevitably, the company will fall a 
little bit in their share price after the hype surrounding their earnings report wears off, and then I will use those profits that I made to reinvest back into the company. So I would love to hear your thoughts about this strategy down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about why a director of Palantir Technologies is selling some of his shares. According to the article, director Alexander D. Moore sold around 20,000 shares of Palantir's PLTR stock on Wednesday. When this director sold his shares, this company was trading at around $22.02 per share, which means that he made roughly $440,400 from this transaction. You should also keep in mind that the director only sold 20,000 shares, and he still owns around $1.59 million shares of the company worth over $35 million. So for this director to sell only 20,000 shares, I don't think investors need to overreact like they've been doing. Lastly, you as an investor need to be aware that there are other companies releasing their earnings. And of course, Palantir Technologies, like we've said earlier, is going to release their earnings on Monday, May 6th. Palantir Technologies will release their quarter one results after the closing bell on Monday, with analysts expecting this company to bring in around a 50% beat on their earnings per share, while revenues should grow by around 17%. However, I do want to make you aware of one thing. Thing, and that is people are overhyping this company. According to some authors, they believe that Palantir's PLTR stock will surge up to $50 per share. And honestly, that is realistic over a long time frame, maybe over the next decade. However, I highly doubt the company will surge that high over the next 12 months. We need to be realistic about our projections. And like we said in our last video, there are price targets which range anywhere from $5 on the low end up to $35 on the high end. And there are various arguments that go with those specific price targets. But in Anything over $35, in my opinion, is just completely unrealistic for this company. And I would say the same for any price target below $5. Honestly, it's just not in the cards for Palantir to go that low in this short amount of time. But let's get back to the article, because according to this Seeking Alpha report, they believe that their earnings per share will come in at $0.08 cents on the positive, while their revenues will be around $617.52 million. You should also be aware that Palantir normally beats on their revenue estimates, considering that they have beaten their revenue estimates in seven out of their eight reports. And out of those same eight reports, they missed on their earnings per share around half the time or around four times. So obviously, I think they are going to beat on their revenue expectations yet again because they have a long history of doing this. You should also be aware that Lucid Group is also going to be releasing their earnings report on the same day, and they are an electric vehicle company where their ticker symbol is LCID. Next up on Tuesday, May 7th, we have Disney reporting their earnings report, which is an entertainment behemoth. Their earnings per share estimate is around $1.11, while their revenue estimates come in at around $22.15 billion. You should also be aware that Disney has topped their earnings per share estimates in five out of their last eight earnings results, and their revenue has beaten estimates only three out of those eight reports. I also think you should keep your eye on Twilio as well as Datadog and Rivian because they will also be reporting on that same day. Next up on Wednesday, May 8th, we have Shopify, ticker symbol SHOP, which is a gigantic e-commerce company which is rapidly expanding, and right now they have a hold rating on their stock. But the good news is that Citigroup recently upgraded Shopify to a buy rating at a $105 price target. So let's talk about what they are anticipated to bring in in regards to their earnings per share and revenue estimates. Currently, analysts believe that their EPS will come in at $0.17 cents on the positive side, while their revenue estimates will come in at $1.85 billion. And just like Shopify, Airbnb, The Trade Desk, Uber Technologies, Sunrun, and Robinhood Markets will also be releasing their earnings results on the same day. Next up, Plug Power will release their earnings results on May 9th. And as of right now, this stock has a strong sell rating according to some analysts. Now, the good thing about this company is that they have initiated production at their Georgia plant and they reopened their Tennessee plant and they are also trying to cut costs, which is great news. However, I do think they may bring in lackluster results considering that their earnings per share estimate is a loss of 43 cents per share and their revenue estimates are only around $158.6 million. Obviously, on that same day, Blink Charging will also be releasing their earnings report, so you may want to look at that as well. And then lastly, on Friday, May 10th, we have Enbridge, ticker symbol ENB, also releasing their earnings results, and this company currently has a hold rating. But out of all of these earnings results, my eye specifically is going to be on a Palantir Technologies, so I'll be making a video after their earnings results are released. And if you want to see that video, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you in the next YT video.